what percentage of women say their plan for life includes getting married? It's actually 94%. <laughs> What's going on in the audience? About oh, right. <laughs> They're causing trouble. It's Gail's friend in the audience Sorry, causing it's trouble. Charlie. <laughs> you don't want to speak to the divorce women at this point. No, <laughs> no, no. So, 94% of women envisage getting married, and yet not so many of them do anymore. So, was it something like 40 odd percent now or something? Anyway, that was according to a survey by Moore magazine. Nearly all women envisage getting married. Apparently, they plan to have done it by the age of 25. But have you got your life all mapped out? That's what we're going to try to discover in the final part of this morning's show, along with your help, please, and along with the help of John, Dominic and Gail. 0207-173-5555 is the number to tell me if you've planned your life in minute detail. If you have, is it working out? Or have you felt like a bit of a failure because you've set yourself too high a target? More and more people are planning their lives. That's what psychologists tell us anyway. The thought being, in a world that seems to get more scary every week, the idea of setting down a plan stops us from getting overwhelmed and forgetting our goals. So maybe it's uh, meet your soul bait, soul bait, or bait, bait, or bait your soul mate by age 23, get married by 26 maybe, baby by 29, rule the world by 40, retire as a multi-millionaire by 50. Sounds wonderful. But what if you miss your goal? What if Mr. Wright... He's away somewhere, isn't he, this week? That's why, that's why I'm here. <laughs> what if he doesn't come along when he's supposed to? Does it mean the whole plan is out of the window? Do you have to come up with a new plan, or is your life over? Rumour had it last year that Kylie Minogue had a life plan with her ex, Olivia Martinez, but um, she was pictured yesterday playing golf with underwear model Andre Velencozo. I think that's how you say it. Doesn't matter anyway. He's nice. Uh, so it looks like that plan <laughs> with uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Didn't work out. <laughs> But surely, what's so great about life is the unexpected twists and turns, as Kylie has found out. The fact you can't plan for things like falling in love. Surely keeping to a rigid plan just means you can't live for the moment and enjoy life. So, John, now, when you and your mum sat down and wrote your plan at 17, did it factor in that you would adopt two teenage boys? At what, at what age did you do that? Uh, they were... Thir oh, I don't know, there was 20-something. And they were, they were, you know, early no, teens, 12 yeah, and 13. Were, yeah. uh, it didn't f factor in that, but the best thing I've ever done, yeah. without a doubt. But the fact is, the best plans offer structure and flexibility. Yeah. Any plan that involves simply saying, uh, I'm going to look through my life and at certain ages these things will be accomplished is going to be a, a problem and those are the kind of plans that some psychologists suggest are, are too rigid yeah. the kind of plans you need are the ones that help you make decisions N not the ones that tell you what the decisions are but tell you when you come to these points when your universe might split and you have a choice of going one way or the other when you get to that point how do you make that decision what are the type of things you want to keep in mind mm. bearing in mind your personality and what you want to achieve but that's the thing your personality because you can have all the best laid plans and then it, you could have a, a really really late night and spend the next day in bed when you'd written down oh, I must do this and it's just it depends what your person if you're hedonistic um, then your plans gonna go to pieces isn't it but if, if you're disciplined which I think you reasonably, clearly, disciplined. reasonably are but yeah but then you can even if you know who you are if you know you're a bit of a, a loose cannon at times, and you can incorporate the idea that you have to have points in your life where you can let yourself go a little bit, mm. or, or points in your month or in your week that you can really let yourself be free, and then that allows you to be more structured the rest of the time to compensate, perhaps. But but also keep on track. Is your plan continually being adjusted then? Yeah, it's, mm. it's always, like, like everything, it evolves. And, and what if you don't meet some of those targets? Will you beat yourself up about that? Absolutely. I, I like to be... Uh, I like to be in a position where if I don't achieve something and it's my fault mm. and it's because of my inactivity or my lack of commitment, I should feel disappointed about that. But what it also allows for is the fact that if I don't achieve something and it's due to nothing I can control, that's within the confines of the plan and I can yeah. live with that.
Gail, I think you're a bit like me. I'm, I'm only I'm only assuming. Life plan. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I was like, <laughs> making a nice planet when I'm 28. Uh, alopecia when I'm 31. Single. Ma no, I am I'm rubbish. I've got absolutely no discipline whatsoever, mm. and I love it. Yeah. You but love I know, life, also, yeah. you've made me feel really calm today. I was just saying that to you. The break. I'm like that. Because mm. you just got this really, and I think oh, I want to be a grown up, but we're the same age. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, maybe you should get a life plan. Is it too late? I don't think should it's too talk? late. But the thing I'll is, I'll twist you later. Even <laughs> this, you've got some people whose life plans might be to appear to other people to be just chaos, but to you, it obviously works. You've obviously got some kind of structure that works with your family and your travel, because you've talked about it throughout today. Yeah, I think. Even I if think, it seems like yeah, spontaneous. I think with my daughter, she is the one that like thing that keeps me and I know what I'm doing when it comes to my daughter but she's mm. been with her daddy for two days so I've just gone mental <laughs> I don't know what's happening I'm like, oh, I don't have a kid I don't know what to do so um yeah maybe I should sort of like write something down and say please don't go mental when you haven't got your child with you yes and honey please come home <laughs> please, she's, she's coming home today she's coming home today thank goodness good sorry <laughs> Dominic was it in your life well, plan to become a comic because well, I actually think, know I would I, that was I Tough think that's game. the hardest job exactly she knows the secondary thing for me my life plan was always to be a professional basketball player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just you that by five foot six was a bit tough, yeah. you know. Actually, it's interesting, actually. I have loads. I don't have a plan, but I have had, a, had ambitions that most of them haven't been met. So I just sort of extend them, you know, just put the goal back a little bit further. Well, I'll just carry on trying. You know, I kind of endeavour. I like endeavour, yeah. but I don't know who said this, but it's you. Maybe you know, John. It's you're never too old to be what you could have been, mm. which I think is a very interesting and a, a very sort of salutary thing because it allows you to continue hoping. I think without mm. hope, in any career or any life, you're, you're, it's all over. Yeah. Well, so, there's, who's that 90-year-old novelist that was nominated for... Oh, I can't remember what she is, but anyway, she didn't start writing till... Exactly, yeah. So I'm hoping by 90 to get published again. Exactly. <laughs> so you've got until 90. <laughs> Amy, calls, okay. Yeah, please. our first call is Joe on line three. Joe, hi. Hello. Do you have a plan, Joe? I did. I feel like John. I was 13 when I made my first 10-year plan, and my friends thought I was absolutely bonkers. Um, yeah, I wanted to go to university, get trained, get a job as a teacher, and then the next 10 years was to find a husband and have children. Um, and from then on, you know... And have I've you done stuck, it? stuck to that plan. I've had lots of strange things happen that throw me sideways many a time, but that's given me the structure to keep going, really. So, um, so, get, so Joe, have you got the husband and the children? Yes, and... yes. <laughs> okay. I've got two gorgeous children and a yeah. lovely husband. Yeah. Um, had to have fertility treatment for both, so that was a huge upheaval, but it kept me going, it kept me determined, and, uh, yeah, I'm on the next stage now, which is enjoying time with them and yeah. my job, so, Good. Uh, yeah. And it, and it wasn't on your plan all those years ago to phone us this morning, I no, bet. No, it wasn't. I'm, I'm petrified. <laughs> Glad you did, Joe. Thanks very much indeed. And carry on working towards those goals. Shall we take another quick call, Amy? I think we can, yeah. We've got Alison on line two. Alison, we've got to be really quick, I'm afraid, because I haven't planned my timing very well. Have you had a life plan? Uh, not myself, no. My daughter, she's nearly 14, and her plan is to become a vet. And so she's worked really, really hard at school. She's chosen her options so that she can do the right GCSEs and A-levels. Good. She's planned which college to go to for her A-levels, which has involved asking my parents if she can go and live with them. Because All they right. Live Alison, college. you know what? We've got to leave that. Good luck to your daughter with her plan, because we've run out of time. That is because I haven't planned anything this morning, <laughs> as you've just witnessed. John, it's been lovely having you along. Thanks to you two. Back tomorrow for the yes. final <laughs> right stuff. And the lovely Gloria Honeyford is joining us tomorrow. So is Lawrence Gold. He'll be telling you how to cling on to your money. See you tomorrow, 9.15. <laughs>